Hey guys, this is Anthos from A Changing Altar. Um, I decided that since my How to Make a Broom uh, entry was, was really, really popular on the blog, I decided maybe to try a different uh, ritual tool this time. Uh, so this is a video about how to make your own ritual scourge. So this is mine. Um, I use this generally um, for purification uh, before ritual. Um, I use it to strike my arms, my back, my thighs, my legs, all that, uh, um, in order to break off any pieces of me that should not be there. Um, it cleans off all of the exterior that is not important and uh, really helps to bring me into a ritual mindset. So that's generally what I use it for. You can also use uh, scourges. I've used it very, very, um, very, very few times and not particularly in-depthly um, to induce trance states. Um, so this is mine and I'll explain to you guys how I made it uh, in this video so that maybe you guys can make your own. So the things that you're going to need in order to make yours are actually really simple. First, you need a paintbrush. You'll need a lot of shoelaces. I used the kind that are um, round that you usually find in most work boots, um, but you can use any type that you like. Uh, this isn't integral, but I really liked to use uh, these, which are the metal rings that you can usually get with um, uh, for jewelry making. Uh, and then because you're using those, you'll need things like pliers. You can also use, um, at some point you might need a needle and thread, uh, scissors, string, that sort of thing. Uh, but the basic of it really is just paintbrush, shoelaces, and you can use knots, glue, uh, or anything like that. The technique of it's up to you, but that's the base. So let's get started on the instructions. All right, so step one is to get your paintbrush. This is an awful example. Um, it's way too small. It's not particularly uh, well fitted to my hand, uh, but it's the only one that I had laying around. Basically what you want to do is you're going to want to get a paintbrush that you feel fits nicely into your hand, uh, that you can get a good grip on, uh, and that has a comfortable handle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get rid of the bristles. Now, uh, do not try to cut all the bristles off, because if you have a, a brush that's any more substantial than this, it's going to take forever, it's really messy, and the end result is not clean at all. I figured that out the hard way the first time that I did this. <clears throat> so what you want to do is, see here in the metal part, you've got these tiny little nails. On this one in particular, it's really obvious that they're just kind of like staple nails. They just get bent at the back and then that, that's what holds everything in place. You're going to want to take your pliers and rip those out. What will probably happen is that the metal piece will come off and all of the bristles are glued inside of there so it will all come off in one clean piece. However, if you're using a cheap brush, um, it might not be glued very well, I'm not sure, so just be ready to uh, have to clean up the bristles once they come out, but that's the fastest, cleanest way to do it, is to undo the metal part, slide the whole thing off. You can use that same technique, though it's a little bit more difficult with um, makeup brushes. The upside of that is that they have a lot of pretty handles, and a lot of them are really nicely shaped um, in terms of grip, uh, but that gets a little bit more expensive. So that's your first step, get rid of the bristles. All right, step number two, you're going to take your shoelace. Again, I use the round ones you find in work boots. Um, mine were brown. Uh, this one's black, doesn't matter. So what you're going to want to do is have these on hand. Now, you take your metal rings. The thing that I figured out after a whole bunch of work is that you want to join two together beforehand. Then what you do is slip a shoelace into each of the rings and then slide that all the way down until you have just a little loop at the end. What you're going to want to do then is you slip this onto your paintbrush. Now you're going to start at the bottom and keep adding them all the way up. I found it easiest to do by alternating sides. So right now these come off this side, so the next ones will hang off this side, and then back and forth, so on. 
Um, the reason that I did it this way instead of having, um, like you'll see that the, uh, the shoelace hangs off the thin edge instead of the broad side. If you do it this way, they don't hang quite as nicely, and also I really like doing them off the side because if you add any extra bulk, it makes a much more comfortable hilt on your brush. So, doing it with the rings, my intention was that it would um, keep them in place. It's not quite as secure as I would want. So I, if I was just going to leave them like this, I would just maybe um, tie a quick piece of string or maybe sew them so that they stay really, really secure. But um, I like the way that the metal rings look, so I kept them. But so you're going to want to do that, and then you do it the whole length up to probably about here on your brush. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is, so let's pretend that I've got them all the way up to here. If you want to make yours look like mine, so you can see here that there's substantial knot work and bulk there. Um, it doesn't translate very well over the camera, I'm not going to lie. Um, if you want to do in this style, what I did was <clears throat> you have your first set here. Now you take these extra sides here, the, the length of them, and you're going to want to lay them flush against the length of the brush, so it looks like this. Now. The next set of shoelaces that are underneath, what you're going to do is they're going to be attached exactly the same way as this one, with just the two rings. What you're going to want to do is take that those two lengths of string and wrap them around to tie a knot over these first two lengths, so that the knot will hold these two lengths against the brush. And you're going to keep repeating that down further and further, so that the first one is a knot around two, the next one will have these original two plus the two from the first uh, from that first knot. You'll press those down, and then you're going to tie around four, and then you're going to tie around more, and you keep going all the way down until you've got everything secured, which is what gives that nice hilt shape here as it gets wider. Now, what ends up happening when you do that is that your brush, uh, the your whip will end up looking like this. All of your shoelaces will gather on the sides and you'll have them split down the middle like this. Really, it doesn't make a difference. That will still work perfectly. I just wasn't a huge fan of the way that that looked because it exposes the uh, the last bit of the paintbrush, which I covered in electrical tape to kind of make it black and uh, less obtrusive, uh, noticeable. <clears throat> so, what I ended up doing, and again, I'm gonna get real close to show you, is that I went through and gathered up all of the, uh, the shoelaces so that they lay flat against the brush. You can see that under here. So I took two, tied them together, and then I took two more and attached them to those on the outside. And then I took another two and laid them flat over top of that so that basically it lays essentially flat but makes them broad. It spreads them out this way. So I have all of those hanging now, and that's what helps to hide the brush on the ins or the leftover of the brush on the inside, and then also um, kind of fills out the space in between a little bit more. So that's basically what you're doing. So to reiterate, you're going to take two rings, you're going to slide them down the length of your shoelace until they are tight enough to wrap around your brush. You're going to go from the bottom to the top, alternating sides. Then. If you want to do your knot work like you did with, uh, like I did with mine, uh, then you're going to tie a knot around these two tendrils, tie a knot around the next four, and then tie around again until you've gotten all the way down to the bottom. Um, then the other option is, like I said, that you use thread. You can use uh, knot work. You can sew them together. You can do a lot of different things, but that's just the basic of what I did. So that will be the gist of what you do. I had to use a couple of pieces of black string to uh, secure a couple of pieces in place to make sure that they stay really secure because there's a lot of movement that happens with this. But that's the gist of it. Really, really easy. Um, for the handle, basically you're going to take one of your shoelaces and you want to try to make it at least the length of your handle, if not even longer. Longer is great because then once you um, have wrapped around the whole thing, you can tie a knot in it more easily. So you tie a knot, you're going to take the extra length lay it against the brush and wrap all the way around it. Try to keep it as tight as possible. So you're going to want to keep squishing down like this and make sure that your uh, loops are tight. Uh, then 
at the end, I got really lucky because it had the uh, the hole in the brush there to hang it on uh, a hook. I tied my two pieces together, stuffed them in there, and then hid them again inside. You can see that there is um, a really small um, bump here. That's actually the length of cord from the first part that got hidden underneath. If I didn't point that out to you, you'd probably never notice. But so that's the handle. It gives a really great grip. Um, it's a little bit more comfortable than just the straight up uh, wood. And also, if you're gonna be holding onto this for a long time, you're gonna want something that's gonna be a little bit more cushioned so that, that way it's not sliding around in your hand. And that's the gist of it. That's really what makes the whip. Um, like I said, I use this for um, cleansing and I use it for some minor trance work. Um, the ends of your whip are important. Mine are a mess. That's because I wasn't sure which way I wanted to do this the first time. Um, a lot of this was just kind of put together because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a professional scourge that would cost a lot. Um, this was really inexpensive and I got to play with um, trying some different things to see what I liked. So you can leave your shoelaces like this, in which case the little plastic bit hurts. It's actually, essentially, you know, they, in real whips they would have put on metal tips to make it cut into the skin more. This is obviously not nearly as bad, but that's the closest resemblance that you're going to have. Uh, the coated plastic tips hurt on bare skin. The other thing that you can do is cut the plastic ends off and tie a knot. Um, the knot itself is really great because it adds weight to the end of this, uh, the cord, which gives a better movement through the air, a little bit more direction. I like that. Um, it hurts less than the plastic tip, but it hurts more than if you were to just cut off the end and leave it like that. Um, cutting off the end, I would l burn the end just a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't fray. Um, but if you leave a loose end like that, it's very, very gentle against the skin. Um, it's the most comfortable. If you're do just doing this for um, cleansing, if you're doing it kind of like for any play in the bedroom or anything like that, if you decide that you want to do that, um, that's fine. It's just the movement of it, because there's no weight on the end, it's not as focused in the when it strikes. It doesn't whip quite as well because the pieces spread out because there's no weight on the end. It's not a huge difference, but it's noticeable. Um, through a shirt, this does not hurt at all. It actually makes a really nice thrum that's really, really great for um, trance-inducing. Um, if you do it on bare skin, you can change where you're striking over your back. You can do it on different parts of yourself, and it doesn't hurt until your skin starts to get very sensitive, and even then, you can control that by deciding where you're going to strike and for how long. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, but again, that pain might be the goal, in which case I would say leave the plastic tips and you're going to want to strike as hard as you can. Um, play with it, see what works for you, what's comfortable. Um, I've used it before, um, it's never quite caused me pain, but it, during the uh, trance work that I've done, it does start to become a kind of like a dull sting, and uh, that's really effective for a lot of people into uh, for trying to achieve an altered mind state. So this is it. Super simple. Um, I would be more than happy to make these on commission if anybody's interested. You can contact me at achangingalter at live.com um, or you can contact me through the WordPress or uh, Tumblr blogs. Um, you can leave a comment on the video, anything you like. Um, they're really not expensive. I'm not going to be charging a lot. Um, we can discuss it if you guys contact me. Um, these are shoelaces. They don't come in a lot of colors, but I'm sure that I can do things um, with different cords, um, with uh, suede cord, that sort of thing. We can talk about it. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Um, different designs could definitely be figured out. So this is it. This is mine. Again, just one last time. If you've got any questions, definitely do not hesitate to call me, uh, call me. Do not hesitate to ask me. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. If you've got any tips, definitely let, let me know. I made this without a single reference. This was me just figuring it out as I went. So um, I'm definitely up for some discussion about it. So let me know. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks, bye.